So last November, we, a team of three Palestinians and three Finns, organized in Finland a LARP called Halat Hisar, which is state of siege in English. And um, it was set in, al in an alternative reality setting where Finland was under military occupation, much in the same way that Palestine is occupied in the real world. And um, by the way, all the photos that you will see in this presentation are by our magnificent LARP photographer Tuomas Puikkonen. So we wanted the game to really be about Palestine, not about some stereotypes that the Nordic players might have about occupations or life under occupation. So we created this alternative history where the situation of Finland, history, politics, so on, resembled that of real world Palestine. And uh, here, when doing this, of course, the Palestinian organizers played a crucial role. Uh, just to give an example, I myself probably would not have dared to write um, extremist Finnish characters, um, also because we had Palestinian players in the game and I would have started considering how would they feel about this. But, however, our Palestinian organizers wanted to do this. They wanted to have, for instance, these uh, fundamentalist student politicians inciting terrorism and stuff like this. And uh, when we were creating the game world, we had to analyze uh, differences and similarities between the two contexts, the Palestinian one and the Finnish one, to find possible connection points to build the world. So, for instance, uh, to look at history, uh, the historical Palestine, which is the land area that now consists of Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, was under British mandate until 1948 when the State of Israel was founded and the area was ethnically cleansed from its uh, indigenous population. On the other hand, Finland was part of Russian Empire until 1917 when it became an independent state. And um, here we created this alternative history where the Russians played the role of the British colonists and where Finland never became independent, but instead a fictional state called Euralia was um, founded on Finnish soil and it of course played the role of Israel. Um, so in the game, most Euralian characters were supporting cast uh, soldiers and so on. But for instance, we also had a Euralian human rights activist who had decided to come to the occupied territory to live together with the Finns and to protect them and um, uh, report human rights violations, as some Israeli activists actually do in real life. Uh, so one of the points where this analysis of similarities and differences had to be carried out was nationalism. Because uh, nationalism always plays an important role for people living under occupation and the Palestinians are um, no exception in this respect. However, contemporary Finnish nationalism is very different from Palestinian nationalism because it is about uh, being proud of a rich first world country and it is also often connected to xenophobia and the feeling um, that we don't want to share our wealth, we don't want people from the third world coming to our country. So we had to really uh, consider carefully how to treat nationalism in the game. And Palestinian nationalism has self-determination as its goal. 
And actually, you don't have to go that far back in history to find a Finnish nationalism similar to it. Because Finnish nationalism was born as a part of a struggle for independence during Russian rule. And there, for instance, when you look at um, traditional Finnish nationalist songs, you can see it very clearly. And in this respect, I think the traditional Finnish nationalism is quite different from its uh, Swedish counterpart, for instance. Because uh, Swedish nationalism was based on being a superpower. Sweden was a great empire while the Finnish nationalism was based on the wish that we want to be free from oppression. And we could, uh, this can be seen very well when you look at the lyrics for traditional Finnish nationalist songs, because there you find they're uh, built on this sentiment that we're miserable and our land is very miserable. It's poor and barren, but we love it anyway. We will develop it, and even if our life would be much better in some other place, we will never leave, we will stick to our land, and this makes us tough. And um, these sentiments fit the game world very well, and they helped us create the right atmosphere, and uh, also take the necessary distance from the uh, present-day real-world nationalism. And um, in the game, during the game, I was very moved to see uh, how the players implemented this nationalism, that they actually used uh, these songs, or particularly one song uh, called the Finlandia Hymn. Whenever the soldiers would uh, come in to oppress somebody, to take people out for interrogations or something like this, then the Finns would start hymning humming this Finlandia hymn, and it became a form of protest, a form of resistance. And also there were uh, other protests, there were demonstrations with Finnish flags and uh, silent vigils also with Finnish flags that took place uh, during the game, that emerged during the game. and. Um, for me, in real life, uh, before this, the first association that came to me when I saw the Finnish flag was ice hockey. And in the game, I could see that uh, this symbol, the flag, had become a very different symbol indeed. It had become a symbol saying, look, we exist. We are a people, we are a nation, so stop oppressing us, give us our rights. And once uh, a Palestinian told me that when you're living under occupation, you constantly feel that your whole culture, and therefore your very identity, is constantly under threat, because the occupiers get to decide how it's talked about. Um, they can deny its existence, or they can appropriate parts of it and say that this is our culture, it's always been ours. And I think in the game, um, the players started probably thinking differently about their own nationality and thinking about this alternative setting where they cu their culture is under threat, much in the same way that the Finnish culture actually was uh, somehow under threat during the Russian rule in the 19th century. And I think this... Um, this really helped the players somehow to understand better this um, whole context on an emotional level. So, so thank you.